around and around and around. It's like this. Everybody can't grab no. the one wheel.
it takes the wireless to get a signal <laughs> from here to there, you know, and another wireless to get it from there out to you, it's to that speaker up there. And it's crazy how stuff works. But we spent, I spent all kinds of anguish last night. Uh, brother, uh, Mr. Whoever is chairman of the board of charter, uh, corporate, it's called something else now, what's it called? Spectrum needs to hear this message on spiritual gifts. <laughs> you that spiritual gift. I promise you there. It, down at the church anyhow. Let me read something to you, by the way. This is what J.C. was referring to, and I got it last week. I forgot to read it. Dear friends, thank you for all of the prayers and gifts during my recovery from surgery. Love you all. Diane Calhoun. Amen. And then this was found on the floor uh, a week or so ago. It's a little bitty key. I don't have a clue what the key fits, but it's yours if you want it. And there it is in the health of it. All right. Well, and if you're watching today by Facebook or uh, our church Facebook or YouTube or uh, our website, welcome to you as well. Glad to have you with us. And today will be a little different, but uh, I think you'll enjoy it. And I hope uh, if you want some of the material that we're handing out, just uh, go to the uh, Facebook account and contact me or the website and contact me, and I'll make sure you get it. But uh, it's going to be a little different today. We have been doing, as many of you know, a series on revitalization. On revitalization. We've come to the conclusion the church needs more than revival. Uh, a revival, as we as said so many times, is when you uh, have quit doing what you used to do that worked, and now you uh, and now you uh, need to go back to it. That's a revival. We've learned that uh, we need more than that. We need pure revitalization. In other words, we need to change some things because some of the things that we were that we're doing didn't work. So we're talking about revitalization, making a change to what we used to do to realize a change in what we're doing now. There is a universal church, and that's made up of all of God's believers everywhere from all time, past, present, and future. And in other words, we would say it's made up of, in large part of local churches, which we are. One body, the local church is. One body made up of many parts. That's what a local church is. It's... Uh, the parts are called believers. That's me and you. Like-minded believers. So a local church is a body made up of many parts, as I am. You can think of, when you think of the spiritual gifts and bodies, think of human beings. I am one person. I have one brain. I have one heart. I have one, well, I have one stomach. So we think I have one half. But I have one stomach. <laughs> uh, two eyes, two ears, two, you know, all that sort of thing. Each part, though, has a function. Every one of those parts has a function. And they must work together. The foot can't say, I'm going to walk that way, and the brain says, I need you to go to the back. It's not going to work. They have to be on the same page. They have to work together. And if I try to walk on my hands all the way to the back, it'd take a while. You know, hey, that would be a sight, wouldn't it? <laughs> and so it's important that each part does what it's supposed to do. That just makes sense, but it makes plenty of spiritual sense as well. God uh, doesn't want us confused. He wants singleness of purpose. And to have singleness of purpose, we need to, uh, to realize, identify, and apply the gifts that He's given us. The gifts that He's given us. This local church has several purposes, of course. But we would say that one of the purposes of this church, listen, is to advance the kingdom of Christ. That's why we're here. We're not here just to sing and enjoy the music, although we do. Amen, 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 amen. Not even the fantastic preaching that you get. You're not here just to enjoy that either. <laughs> we're here to advance the kingdom of Christ. And when we don't do that, we're not doing what we're supposed to do. And we are supposed, each one of us, to have a part in that. Each one of us are to have a part in that, in that function. We could say that each one of us, our function is, listen... Uh, to make disciples who make disciples. Does that make sense? You know, you've heard ever since you started going to church, well, God wants everybody to lead people to Christ. That's not just a gift of evangelism. That's something that He charged each one of us with, and that's true. But I'd say that's only half true. He wants each of us to make disciples who then will go out and make disciples. You see, that's how it explodes. That's how that advancement takes place. 
It's not one at a time. It's multiplication at a time. That's how the kingdom of God grows. That's how it did in Acts chapter 1 or 2. And that's how we'll do it tomorrow. That's how we'll do it in the future. As a multiplication discipleship. Make disciples who make disciples. In order to do that, I promise you we have to know what our spiritual gifts are. If we don't, and we don't apply, we just we run it on a dead cell in our battery. You know what I'm saying? We just can't quite get there from here. And we're all a team. We're all a team. Think about what a football team would be if, if everybody wanted the headlines every week. That's not going to work. You know it's not going to work. Uh, and do you ever notice the teams that consistently win championships? I'm thinking of the, uh, the uh, Dallas Cowboys, that period of their 10, 12 years or so. They, didn't, they, didn't, they had some stars, you know, the quarterback, and they had Emmett Kelly and this, that, and the other. But really, they had a team. They, everybody, you, one day you read the paper and the linebacker would be featured. The next week, that real fast Hayes guy, that, that end of head, uh, would be featured. Next week, Stallback was doing great and mighty thing. See, they had a team, and each team did what he was supposed to do. And that uh, Green Bay Packers, if you're a Packer fan, or, or what, UCLA, if you're a basketball all of those teams were consistent champions. They got the job done because they understood teamwork. And so spiritual gifts and teamwork go together. Absolutely go together. So today, I wish for you maybe to turn to Titus chapter 3 if you have your Bible and you want to be there. It's, I'm going to read it. It's on the screen as well. But we'll start with a little prelude with, with Titus chapter 3. It's in the middle of the New Testament. It's right after the Think of the T's. That's how I remember where Titus is. All those T's in there, First and Second Timothy. And, it's, uh, and then right before Philemon and Hebrews, Titus. Titus was a letter written by Paul uh, to him, to a guy named Titus. Titus was a young guy that Paul had left uh, in Corinth. Paul established the church, and but he left, uh, he left Titus to sort of head it up until he could get back. He knew there were some things that needed to be done. And so he left Titus there to sort of administer, to manufacture, to, pre, uh, to administrate, to preach, to, to elect elders, to elect elders. Uh, he left them to set good examples, good examples. Look, let's just read it now. It's, uh, it's not that long of a, of, a, uh, of, a, of a passage. Listen to it and see if you see the teamwork and possibly some gifts in there. When I shall send our Artemis, or Artemis, unto thee, He's talking uh, now in a letter to, uh, to his young cohort, uh, Titus. Ortatius, be diligent. Be diligent. In other words, focus. Put your shoulder to the wheel, son. To come unto me, to the Nicopolis. For I have determined there to winter. Paul's going to stay there. And he wants uh, him to come and, bring, uh, and uh, send Artemis and Titius. Uh, bring Zenos. In other words, it looks like we're building a team. Bring Zenus, oh my lawyer. Mm. Well, anyhow, bring Zenus for some reason they need a lawyer. And Apollos, a soul winner, a church builder. Apollos, bring him too on their uh, and bless them on their journey diligently. Diligent. There you go, that word again. There's going to have to be some grease applied to the job. Diligently. That's the spiritual gifts, by the way. Uh, that nothing be wanting unto them. Somebody in that crowd's got the gift of helps and the gift of mercy and the gift of uh, giving. Because he didn't want them to want anything. Nothing be found wanting in them. Uh, and let's ours also learn, our people also learn to maintain good works. That means deeds that God wants us to accomplish is what that means. And that we're right in the middle of spiritual gifts when we say that. If we're going to, ex if we're going to commit uh, good deeds to Jesus, we're going to have to have his power to do it. Because little Tom Mary don't have enough strength in it. So I don't know about you. Maybe you too. Uh, super spiritual. Well, I have to get a little bit of help. The Holy Spirit and some spiritual gifts, to be honest with you. Okay, for necessary users, uh, that may not be unfruitful. Not parked on the side of the road waiting on a free ride. All that are with me salute thee. They had recognition. They must have been pretty good at what they did. They must have been uh, applying their spiritual gifts. Because for Paul to say, We applaud you. <laughs> Paul was no easy taskmaster. He was a demanding dude. And if you got his uh, uh, positive attention, you were doing something right. 
And Paul says, we salute you. We think you're doing really well there. And by the way, when uh, uh, just do something for me. They had the hospitality. They had the gift of hospitality, apparently. Because he said, greet them that love us. Greet them that love us in the faith. In the faith. Christian. Three verses talk about love in the Bible. Three major premises. One is love God. All your heart, mind, soul, strength. Right? Love your neighbor as yourself and love, and love each other. Love your sisters and brothers in Christ and then love the unsaved as well. Love, love, love. And he is saying, greet them that love us in the faith. In the faith. In the faith. Grace, in other words, uh, uh, unmerited favor. Be with you is his prayer there at the very end and then he closed it. So there you go. He's talking to Titus and I saw a team being built there myself. Each one sounded like they had a function. He wouldn't have needed all those people to do those things. Titus could have done all that himself. But he was building a team he, uh, there with his letter uh, to, uh, uh, to Titus. Do all you can to help others, he said. If that's not team conscious, I don't know what it is. Do all you can to help yourself. That's not what he said. Don't do everything you can just to help yourself. He said do all you can to help others. Others, others, teamwork. And devote yourself. I mean, just focus on it. Fall in love with doing good. Fall in love with doing the right thing. Doing what I want you to do. God wants, not God, not Paul, but God wants you to do. It was, and uh, that's what he was saying. Now, I'm going to read one more passage. It's rather lengthy. Uh, but listen to this and listen to the teamwork that you'll hear in here. This is all about teamwork. I'm reading from, from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And uh, I'll just start at verse 12 and I'll go down maybe to 27. So listen. For as the body is one, we've talked about that, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. And also is the church, by the way. For by one Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, are we all baptized into one body. That's the family of God. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, in other words, he said we don't discriminate. You know, Paul spoke uh, primarily to, the, to one, and, and, and Peter primarily spoke to the Jews. But Paul had a, had felt like he had a mission. He had a penchant from God, a, a, a message from God to take the gospel to the Gentiles. And it was uh, interesting because, you know, it, up until then, the Jews and the Gentiles didn't belong at all. The Gentiles were jealous of the Jews. The Jews were a uh, and, and, and they had a big head on their shoulders because they were God's chosen people. Hello. You know, was their attitude. He said, no, it don't matter. He said, both of them can be saved and into that one body. Whether we be bond or free. In other words, slaves or slave owners. Bond or free, we've all been made to drink into one spirit. The Holy Spirit of God. For the body is not one member, but many. And then he says, he gives some analogy. If the foot shall see the hawk, because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body, I'll just part and quit. I won't do anything. Is it not therefore still of the body? Sure it is. That foot's important. Got to have it. If the whole body were an eye, were there, uh, were there the hearing? Can, is anybody going to hear if the whole body was an eye? Uh, you got to have ears. Got to. Uh, and they have to do their job. If the whole were hearing, where was the smelling? The whole nose day is not going to get left out of this thing either. But now has God set the members, every one of them, in the body. God set the members. Did you see that? God ordained me to do what I'm doing right this minute. I believe it with all my heart. He ordained you to do something too. And that's what you're supposed to find out. Ordained, I have, God has set the members, every one of them, in the body. As it hath pleased Him. Woo! I want to please Him. How about you? Then I better find out what my gift is and do it. I want to please Him. 19. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? We can't have everybody preaching around here as much as some of you maybe like to. Somebody got to do that. Somebody got to play the piano. But now are they many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more of those members of the body. Well, he hits that nail over and over, doesn't he? I mean, apparently they were thick-headed about it too. <laughs> he had to repeat himself a few times. Which seemed to be more feeble are necessary also. Hallelujah. 
Ruth, there's hope for me and you yet, baby. We, we might be old, but we got a job to do. And that's pray. We can pray. If we can't do anything else, bless God, we can pray. Amen. Might not be able to tap dance anymore, but I can still talk. And I can still still speak to the Lord. And so even, and he don't mean feeble, you know, he just means a little, little, little bit older. And so, oh, here's just a tad boy, is what he's talking about, the feeble. They're necessary. They're necessary. And, and those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, somebody don't have a million dollars in the bank account. Hello? Maybe somebody doesn't even have a can of pork and beans today. They're still welcome. He loves them, and we do too. The ones that are less honorable. Upon these, we bestow more abundant honor. Let's just raise them up and bless them and help them and, and solve their, help solve their problem and give to them. And our uncomely parts. Boy, I got a few of those. That just means they're not... <laughs> I got parts that don't look so good. You know, my hair's falling out right in here and turn, all that stuff. And uh, somehow my pants are getting tighter. I don't know how that happened. But my uncommonly, part, uncommonly parts have more abundant commonness somehow because of Jesus. For our commonly parts have no need, but God has tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. He'll get rid of that fat stomach, Tom, if you just exercise and eat right. That's what he's saying there. He's got an answer for it. That there should be no schism, 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 uh, split, uh, uh, argument, confusion. Uh, I say and a you say is what Mama used to call a schism right there. That's a I say and a you say. In the body. We don't need it. Don't need it. Don't need people fussing and, and wrangling in the body. Uh, but that the members should have the same care, same care one for another. Uh, I'm supposed to love Democrats, and Democrats are supposed to love Republicans. Uh, I'm, you know, we're supposed to love the Presbyterian, the Pentecostal, the Catholics, and, the, and all that stuff, and they're supposed to love us too, if they're saved. And where the one member suffer, all the members suffer. That happens here. I've seen it. I've seen it. Carol can test, testify to that, I'm sure. You know, that there's been people here who've reached out to her. Diane just did it in the car. Uh, when somebody's suffering, all the members suffer. They hurt for, for them, and they reach out. And, and I'm sure all of you can claim that. Uh, all the members suffer, or when one, one member is honored, all the members rejoice. You know, I watched yesterday, uh, you know, I went to a different I went to a church with Pat and I used to pastor, uh, a while, uh, uh, social pastor a while back. A young boy sitting there, big time football star, I mean, he's just something else on the football field. A young youth leads people to Christ, loves the Lord, just a leader in everything he does. And he was giving honor to those at that table around him. I, I listened to him and watched him for a minute or two. He wasn't over there saying, <clears throat> I'm Griff. I'm the one you read about the newspaper, dude. <laughs> no. He was lifting up each one of those people there at that table with him. He was, he was honoring them and lifting them up. I thought, praise God, Tom, you need to learn that lesson. All right, now whether one member suffer, all suffer. Whether one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ. And members in particular. Do you see do you see what he's saying there about spiritual gifts? It's not only teamwork, it's about spiritual gifts there as well. And it uh, some of you are good with kids. I've seen it. I know it. Some of you are really, really good at kids and but you can't sing a note, maybe. Maybe. I said I, I said maybe. <laughs> but you're good with kids. Well, if that's the case, then guess where you ought to think about applying your talent? Not over there with Melissa playing the piano, probably, like me. I don't, she asked me to sing every once in a while, and that I'm just going to pass. I mean, that ain't my gift. I like to, and I love it. And sometimes I sound pretty good in the shower and back there when there's nobody here and all that. <laughs> but I tried to sing tenor on something she was playing today. I, I don't know what happened last night. The miracle must have come and manifested itself upon me. That sounded pretty good last night. I said it's a bad morning. I didn't even want to try uh, and you work with kids if you got that talent. Uh, some people can. You know, Roger's good at this thing, fixing stuff. That sucker can fix everything. I can't fix anything. But he can. Well, he ought to be fixing stuff. Uh, some people can, uh, you know, they can do, uh, they can fix stuff but can't balance a checkbook, for instance. Well, you know, let the treasurer be, uh, balance the checkbook and you go fix the air conditioner or whatever it is. Uh, make make what, what's broken work. Be a team player. Do what you, you're good at is what both of those passages were saying. Have you ever noticed, by the way, and I'll throw this in for nothing, you ever noticed those of us 
and those of your friends and acquaintances that are busy seem to be busy involved, involved in what they're supposed to be doing and what they're good at. They're in, they're in love and involved with what they're good at. They seem to be the happiest people around. You ever notice that? I oh, mean, they're just walking down the road more zippity doo dah. They're happy, go lucky. They, they don't, they don't. I, they know all about Afghanistan and the war and cancer and stuff. They know about it just like we do. But they are happy people. Probably the ones that come the most to church. Maybe the ones that give the most. I don't get my hands in that. But probably. Those who are not willing to do what they're good at. Well, they look like usually. And not just in the church. This is true in business. It's true in family relationships. It's true across the board. If they are not involved in what they're good at, they don't ever seem to be joyful. Always wrangling. Always causing disruption. Always finding fault. Oh, I'm so tired of hearing it. Nitpicking somebody that Pat used to work for called it. Not, not a verb. She was the office manager. <laughs> she was trying to calm the nitpicking. They don't even show up a lot in most cases. And they often leave because they think that grass shears a lot greener somewhere else. They're not, they're not, let me tell you, and I don't, I've never said this to a church member, but I got a pastor friend, I've heard him say this to a person one time. This blew me away. The person came and apparently he knew that they, they'd swap, they'd been to 10 different churches in two years. Just leaving the church and leaving the church and leaving the church and leaving the church and leaving the church. And they came in one Sunday morning and they said, Pastor, we love your church, and uh, and we want to join. And he said, well, he said, we have some rules and regulations. Tell me, why do you want to join? And she said, well, because we haven't gotten anything out of our last church at all. And he said, well, how about such and such church? No. And then, well, how about such and such a church? He didn't get anything out of it. No, not really. And he went back to it, because he had the history on it. He knew and he said, so you're telling me you didn't get anything out of any of those churches? That, that's right. He said, well, let me ask you a question. What were you putting in it? <laughs> what were you putting in? I said, ooh, preacher, you done all those toes hurt. <laughs> they ain't come back. Now, but anyway. <laughs> Teamwork is vital. No doubt about it. So do what you're good at. Um, eight reasons. Ushers, or, or, you know, ushers, if y'all come forward, I got something here to give everybody. Now, Bob will tell you, we, this, didn't cost, uh, this didn't cost the church a dime, uh, but it's, uh, it's split everybody if you will. All right, well, you're going to be handed a packet. Now, don't go fumbling through the packet looking at all the stuff at the back of it yet. <laughs> There's the packet. It's called Spiritual Inventory if you haven't gotten yours yet. This is, I've taken spiritual uh, uh, test inventories over and over and over again. How many of you have ever taken a, a spiritual gifts test? Uh, test? Okay. A couple of people. Um, many haven't. Most haven't, to be honest with you. Most, most church members uh, have never done that. Why do I harp on, on spiritual gifts? Why do I jump up and down about it all the time? For that very reason. Most pastors don't talk about it much. And uh, uh, they, it's vital. It's vital to teamwork. It's vital to success. It is going to be vital to this revitalization effort. I promise you. I promise you. But they don't. They don't. Uh, they don't preach about it because they don't see the good, the need in it. They think it's just one of those things that somebody's going to throw up an argument about tongues or about healing, about something, and so they stay away from it. Well, uh, you've got a handout there in the front of that handout. Uh, no, I'm sorry. In the in the handout are three pages. Pull out those eight and a half by eleven pages. Don't try to read them now. But those are eight reasons why spiritual gifts are important. Front and back, by the way. Read the front, turn over, read the back. There's eight of them. Why spiritual gifts are important. That's part of your homework. Read that this week. Why are spiritual? If you don't understand why you need to do something, you'll never do it. I have come back to that conclusion myself. If I, if I do it, if in the military, I, I did what I had to do and what I was told to do. But I promise you, in real life, if I understand why I have to do it and need to do it, I'll do it much more quickly, probably much better, because I understand the why of it. So that page will give you some 
wise on why spiritual gifts are important. Now, in this uh, in this in this out booklet that you've got you got here, we're gonna go through it uh, in the rest of the time that we have here real quickly. But read that handout at home. Read it before you take the test. Okay, because it's important that you know why you're taking the test and why you're going to try to learn something from the test and why you're going to try to apply and ask God to use you in that area in your test. And also, it's okay to ask you to increase the, the velocity, the, the tenacity of your gift. That's fine. And you may want to do that as well. But read that before it. Then take the test and then read it as many times afterwards as you want to. Uh, in your book, the very front page, it's called page two, the, the inside cover page, is a letter from Larry Gilbert. Larry Gilbert is, is a well-known, renowned uh, preacher, but also he specializes in spiritual gifts. And he and a guy by the name of Elmer Towns, Dr. Elmer Towns, brilliant, brilliant theologian, designed this packet. Uh, Elmer Towns started working on it 40, 30 years ago. And they have just redone it, redone it, redone it, updated it. And now they've got a really a sweet, nice presentation. They talk about the gifts that they're going to touch on there in the survey. Beside that, there's nine gifts going from the top to the bottom on that page. Evangelism all the way down through administration. The, the team building gifts. Those are the church building or the team building gifts that this test addresses. They have other tests that address all the rest of it. But you need to know which of those gifts or how many of those gifts you have. So do that at home. Take that test. Now, uh, the test, if you'll notice the next page, page three, is a uh, is a question number one down through question 27. Is everybody with me? You can see where I am. 27 questions on page one. And then if you, if you keep turning, there's 108 questions there. It'll take you about 20 minutes. Something like that to do that. That's all. 20-25. I did it last night. It takes you about 20-25 minutes. Um, and so do that before you look at all this stuff over here, the rest of that. Because if you go reading the definition of all those terms, uh, it'll jaundice your answers. You'll say, well, you know, an evangelist would answer it like this way, and I think I'm an evangelist, so I'm going to answer it this way. That's not the way to do this. So don't even read the rest of it until you take the test, okay? Then read the rest of it after you find out what your gift is. And uh, uh, then if you flip over another couple of pages, you'll see a little half pulled out. That's your instructions for step one and step two. And it tells you in there that when you take it to have your questions, let's just say maybe laying right here at your left hand. And this answer sheet now, turn it right side up, like, uh, like uh, this way, horizontal. And notice that on that page it goes from 1 to 18. Then the next column is 19 to 20, all the way over to the end. The 108th question is bottom right hand corner. Everybody see that? Each question has three choices, one, two, or three. Remember the old days back in school when you took those achievement exams or whatever it was at the end of each year, you had to do that. You had to completely fill in, the teacher would say, and she'd crack your knuckles. You didn't completely fill in. You didn't. Yeah, yeah, well, number two pencil. I don't know that that matters, but okay, maybe so. But it, back then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So make sure that you do one, two, or three. Listen, you can't have a wrong answer. You're going to make an A on this test. I guarantee you. Because ain't none of the answers wrong. <laughs> and in fact, be honest. Be honest, and you'll still be right. Don't cheat. Don't fudge. Well, you know, I thought I, I'm going to say yes always, but it ain't always. Well, it, then you need to go to the middle answer, don't you? Because the middle one is occasionally. If you're not always, then you're occasionally. <laughs> okay? So you either almost. Oh, let's go to question number one. Let me give you a little example. We'll just go to question number one. No. I have a consuming passion, a which means a strong desire, great concern to reach people who don't know Christ. Now, I know people like that. I know a lady, I guarantee you, you won't be around her two minutes. And she's not talking to you about your soul. I know it. I've been around her at the last church I've had. And I know plenty of other people like that, too. You do, too. But that's the kind of desire I was talking about there. That kind. 
be honest with you, I don't do that all the time. I don't have that gift. Now, am I supposed to do that? Yeah. And do I try to? Yeah. But I know, after taking 15 of these things, what my gifts are. They always come out pretty much the same. Maybe a tad different in ranking, but pretty much the same. I'm not, I, I couldn't put a one on that. I'd have to put a two because it's occasional. Is that bad? No, that's the way God built it. Okay? So you can't be wrong. You can't fail the test. <laughs> and that's a good thing. Boy, I'm taking a few. I wish I could have failed. All right, so you got step. So you see how to do it there. That's step one and step two. Then when you finish that, it'll, step two will tell you how to, how to grade it. By the way, don't tear this thing apart before you quit all 108 answers. Don't tear that. There's two parts of that thing. If you look down in there, the next page looks kind of weird. But the next page is going to become a graph. It's going to show you, it's going to have lines going out like a bar graph. And it's going to show you what you're really good at, what you're sort of good at, what you better stay away from. Now, what you don't have it quite as much. I took mine uh, yesterday, and it said I was good at driving a taxi cab, and I was good at eating. <laughs> I, was, I was good at saying that thing I'm always good at. It always comes up almost the same. Teaching, exhortation, and administration. Those are my top three. Almost always. Preaching, teaching, and, and driving the bus. Or, or, or making sure we got enough buses, I guess, would be administration. Really. And so teaching and exhortation. Pat took it last night. I don't remember. Mercy was one of them. I remember that. Um, and, uh, and so on. But... You do it, it will, if you've never done this before, I promise you, you'll go, wow. How about that? And then you'll go, oh me, I've got that gift, I've got to go do something about that. Uh, I haven't used that gift yet. Be careful. You, 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 if you don't use them, it's like a tomato on a vine. You don't get picked. You know what happens eventually. Stinks. Yeah. So we use your gift. Don't let it dry up on the vine, okay? Now, there's one other thing for those of you who want to, and I did. Um, there is a database, that you, there's, a, there's a, uh, a website that you can go to. Now, unfortunately, because you can't copy and paste what I put on, on the uh, sheet of paper, that sheet of paper right there, does everybody see that? That's a, a website that you'll have to key it in. Um, unfortunately, but you key that in, you can't copy and paste from a sheet of paper. Now you could scan that in, build a Word document, scan the Word document right there and do it if, if, you, <laughs> if you don't trust your typing. <laughs> but at any rate, you go right there. That's our, our Senegal Church's database. Mine's already in there. Uh, I, I haven't looked, but I'm sure Pat's is because she took it last night is already in there. But you can take that test online. Okay, is what I'm trying to say. You don't have to fool all this right here. You can do it online. I know that takes 20 minutes because I did it last night. Uh, it took Pat a little longer than 20 minutes. If you have a problem, don't, don't get this from and, and, and rush through it. Because then you're going to have to undo what you rush through. And uh, it's going to ask you questions and you're going to say, now Pat, they won't have the problem that you and I have. Because they've never registered for it before or, or had any email sent to them from either one of these companies probably before. That's how you got the vine and I got the vine we were in. They knew us. <laughs> when they'll say enter a user code and a pass and an email address, because they're gonna send you uh, not only do you know instantly, but they're also gonna send you uh, some nice stuff on how to apply your gift and whatnot, email wise. But when you put in your email, if you've already done that with them somewhere along the line, it's going to say, no, you've already got an e that email. Now put your password in. Well, you know how to right. passwords are. Shoot. I got a piece of paper, eight and a half by 11, front and back, with stinking passwords. And, uh, and I, I don't know when the last time I opened it. Uh, so we got hung up in that, don't know what the password deal is. It couldn't get out of it. And I even bought the system. Now they got so mad at me, it said, illegal, 403, kill, don't do it, send the hit squad to their house. I mean, it was bad me. You know, I mean, they got mad at me. Uh, so so don't, don't go there. And you probably won't have that problem at all because you've never done this before with that with them, with your user code and username and password. But if you have, for Pete's sake, uh, either 
if you don't know your password, hit send me a, another one. Do that. Don't try guessing. Once you guess three times, it's going to lock you down anyhow. <laughs> so say send me another one or reset it. And uh, they'll send you an email or a text or something. And it's a long thing about that long that you've got to put, put back in there. As a temporary password that gets you back in business again. But anyway, uh, if you're savvy to, to computers and whatnot, you won't have a problem. Musicians come ahead. If you're not savvy, uh, then go cautiously. If you want to do it that way, uh, call me and I'll walk you through it. I'll help you through it. Okay. Um, if you just want to, you don't want to fool with the computer at all. You want to do it manually, then do it manually. Now you got to do that. You next week we're going to talk about it. Now, try to, I'm not trying to beat you up or any of that. I just want you to see how important it is. It's finally to know what you, what God thinks you're good at. Is that not is that not something that everybody would want to know? Absolutely. Lord, what 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 do you think I'm good? What did you bless me with extra? Uh, you know, and it may surprise you. I don't know. Teamwork. Oh boy, is it vital in teamwork? You've seen you've seen the video, I'm sure, of the uh, of the lady, uh, God help her, that was born with no hands and feet, no arms, and uh, and uh, but she has learned somehow to do with her feet what you and I do. Right? And don't don't even try to do that. Don't don't go there. Don't try to, to hang sheetrock if you're an electrician, and uh, don't try to fix the air conditioner if you sheetrock it. You know, use what God gave you. That's the smart way to do it. And guess what will happen? If you do that, you'll end up making disciples who makes disciples. And if that happens, guess what will happen next? We will advance the kingdom of God here on earth, just as it is in heaven. And if that happens, guess what will happen? This old world will get turned around one more time. Amen? That's the goal. That's the goal. We'll impact the world for Christ. That's the only answer. So buckle up. We're going to go fast here in the next few months. We're having a meeting this coming week. We're going to talk about Friend Day, hello. Uh, and we're going to talk about golf tournaments, and we're going to talk about music sing-alongs here on Sunday night or, or whatever, and we're going to talk about age-graded uh, activity, and uh, we're going to talk about family equipping ministry, all kinds of things are coming up in the next, I'd say, six months. So you better know what your battery is full of so you can rely on that battery. Uh, charge it up, charge it up, charge it up. Amen. Maybe. Will you help me with that? Yes. Just out of, just out of, uh, well, the preacher wanted me to do it. I, I don't give a rip about this, but just do it for that reason anyway. You'll be glad you did, I promise you. You'll, you'll really get something out of it. Father, we thank you for this time together. Thank you, Lord, that you uh, supply us <laughs> with spiritual gifts. You, apply, you supply us with extraordinary supernatural ability to do things that you want us to do when you want us to do them. So Lord, it's up to us like the old sheep to be attentive to the shepherd. That's you, Lord, to be attentive to you. And to when you say jump, we jump. Ask you how high on the way up. Lord, we use those gifts that you give us to accomplish your will that we can reach others for you in advance. Show us the importance of this spiritual gifts thing, Lord, and then build this your local church as a result we, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A little short invitation. We're singing song number 673. 673, a beautiful song. In fact, we're going to try to sing all four verses real short. If you need to come, stand please with me, uh, if you will. If you need to come for salvation, you come. I'll talk to you about that. We'll pray. Set up a point of whatever we need to do. Don't worry about it. Uh, being ashamed of it. Everybody here had to do it. Uh, if you want to talk about being baptized, never been baptized since you were saved, you come, we'll talk about it. If you are not a member of a local church or a member of one that you don't go to anymore and you want to, you are contemplating joining this church, you come during that invitation, we'll talk about it. If you have any other need whatsoever that you want prayer for, you want uh, the men or the, or the ladies to lay hands on you, whatever the situation may be, you come as we say. Must Jesus be.